Welcome everyone to this week's Mountain West ADC Echo. I am excited to see you all and I'm finally going to do this talk I've mentioned a couple times and I'm going to start with this question. Do integrase inhibitors cause weight gain? And I'm going to share the punchline with you, which is that I have no idea. I'm going to show you some suggestion that maybe they do and then I'm going to ask everyone if this is something you've noticed in your clinic patients. I'm going to ask you that at the end. I'm just curious, have you observed that integrase inhibitors cause weight gain, such as when you switch to an integrase inhibitor or when you start someone, do you think integrase inhibitors cause more weight gain than other classes? So I'll just ask you at the end if you've observed that. In the meantime, by way of background, let me just mention a little bit about what we know about antiretroviral therapy in general and weight gain. So we've known for a while, I think this is uh, pretty well accepted, that weight gain is common in the first year or so, maybe even longer, following initiation of any ART. Now to some degree, I think this may be healthy and good for the individual with low body weight, with low CD4 count, with a very high viral load, who's probably had some level of consumption and wasting for a while, I think some degree of weight gain can be healthy. And actually for those who start ART and aren't initially overweight, may uh, can lead to lower mortality, and that's been uh, shown in studies. What's also been shown, though, is if individuals, especially those who are normal body weight or overweight, when they start ART, gain too much weight, it can lead to higher rates of diabetes and cardiovascular disease. And what we have observed, and what I've seen in my clinic, is the person who comes in who, let's say, has relatively normal body weight, who starts ART, then in the first year, gains weight and enters that overweight or obese category, there are high rates of incident diabetes, uh, hypertension, and other metabolic and cardiovascular events. Now, older data show that this weight gain after ART initi initiation might be more likely with a boosted protease inhibitor. This study that I've cited here at the end, which was a sub-study of the initiation trial that compared raltegravir, boosted darunavir, and boosted adazanavir actually compared changes in lean mass and regional fat with these three regimens and found there was no difference. So when this came out, I think we all kind of looked at it and said, okay, well, of our sort of currently modern therapy, raltegravir, boosted darunavir, boosted adazanavir, fat changes, lean mass changes are about the same. But of course, now we've moved beyond that. And those really aren't the agents we're starting most people on anymore. So even that data, which wasn't that long ago, is already a little bit outdated. So we know any ART initiation likely leads to weight gain. The majority of our initial regimens now, as you all know, are integrase inhibitor based. So here's the most recent guidelines from the Department of Health and Human Services just updated last month with their new category called recommended regimens for most people. And you can see, as you all know, they are all integrase inhibitors, largely in lines with the IAS USA guidelines saying, again, we really should be starting people, at least most people, except for select circumstances on integrase inhibitors. The reason for this has largely been tolerability. And that tolerability of integrase inhibitors is important. What I've shown you here is simply some treatment naive studies that compared an integrase inhibitor in the far left column to a different anchor agent. And you can see here the overall virologic efficacy with suppressed viral load at 48 weeks. And you can see they all really favor the integrase inhibitor. I've starred the ones that were statistically significant, but even those ones that weren't, had a trend towards favoring the integrase inhibitor. And largely this has been because of tolerability. There also are switch studies that have shown that these integrase inhibitors are generally more tolerable and often because of that, more effective than older agents. In addition, integrase inhibitors have reduced risk of virologic failure over time and reduced risk of resistance or regimen change. And that's been shown in a number of trials. And we've talked about how at least with dolutegravir, Resistance in people who start dolutegravir as their first regimen just does not seem to happen. So I think there's a lot of support here and a lot of good reason why we are using integrase inhibitors first line for most individuals who are treatment naive. However, integrase inhibitors are not free of risks. And I come back to these topics because we are using integrase inhibitors so frequently now because they are first line. I do think it's worth, worthwhile to highlight some of the risks and some of the considerations. 
So we've talked before about the studies of integrase inhibitors that have shown that they can cause central nervous system side effects and that those side effects can lead to intolerability in a certain percentage of individuals. We've talked about how those central nervous side effects in some studies seem to be more associated with dolutegravir. In some studies, especially dolutegravir combined with abacavir, and in some studies, uh, more frequent in women and in older individuals, and we have a talk on this, on the central nervous side effects of integrase inhibitors. But now, a couple of studies that I'm gonna show you suggest that integrase inhibitors may be associated with weight gain. And I bring this up, number one, because I was surprised by it, and number two, because we are using integrase inhibitors so much, and I do think that if this is true, it's something we need to watch out for, but I think the data is far from conclusive. So let me just show you what we know, and then I'll ask for your opinion. So the first paper was simply a research letter from investigators in France. It was in AIDS, uh, published in AIDS back in June uh, 2017. They had analyzed the reason for discontinuation of dolutegravir-based ART, and out of 517 individuals, just over 10% had stopped dolutegravir because of side effects or intolerability any sort of intolerability. And this is pretty consistent in the literature. Somewhere around one in 10 to one in 20 people who start dolutegravir just don't tolerate it. In my experience, that's most commonly because of insomnia or headache. But somewhere around 10% of people just don't tolerate dolutegravir. That's consistent with, I've, with what I've seen in my practice as well. What they note is that unexpectedly, the reason for stopping dolutegravir in four individuals in this analysis was weight gain, fairly considerable weight gain. So they decided to look at this in a little more depth. So they looked at 462 individuals who received dolutegravir for at least six months. Here's just some baseline uh, description. So the mean age was about 50, 65% were males. So actually 35% uh, were women, which is higher than a lot of analyses in the HIV world. The mean CD4 count was high. Importantly, 94% were already on some ART regimen. So most of these individuals were switching to dolutegravir. So it wasn't, dolutegravir wasn't their first regimen. Most were switching and most were suppressed. And then you can see here, the majority had relatively normal baseline BMI. Only a small percentage were uh, grossly underweight and only a small percentage would uh, fit the description of obese at baseline. And after approximately a year, here was their mean time from baseline to assessment. Um, the mean weight gain was three kilos, which isn't trivial. So that's somewhere, what, around seven pounds. And I, I just thought this was notable. For 20% of patients, weight actually increased by 10% or more, and for 27% of individuals, weight increased four to 10%. Um, the mean BMI increase was one, and the mean increases in BMI and weight were statistically significant for women. There was a trend towards significant for men, and I'll show you that on the next two slides. And interestingly, similar to the central nervous system side effects data, this analysis looking at weight gain, specifically on dolutegravir, also found that the association was especially significant for women receiving a bacavir lamivudine along with dolutegravir. So here's just a gross depiction of what they saw in terms of change of weight for all comers, for women, for women receiving abacavir along with dolutegravir, and then for men. So again, the association was significant for all comers, for women, especially for women receiving abacavir, dolutegravir, and trended towards significant for men. And here's a similar pattern with mean change in BMI. But this is super limited. This is one center. This is a research letter. There's no comparison here. I remember seeing this when it came out in AIDS and kind of thinking, eh, well, that's kind of interesting. And I think someone on Echo even asked me at one point whether integrase inhibitors led to weight gain. And I kind of said, ah, there's no data for that. So this is where we were. Now, since then, we have two additional studies supporting this. And I can't help but think, well, is there something to this or not? So here's study number two, uh, which was just recently published in J-AIDS. This came out of Vanderbilt University. So what they note in this paper is that they simply made the same observation in the clinic, that individuals who switched to an integrase inhibitor after being suppressed and stable on ART seem to gain weight. So they did a retrospective observational study. They looked at individuals with an HIV RNA under a thousand copies on a tripla, a Favarin's TDF FTC for at least two years, and they compared weight changes that occurred after switching to an integrase inhibitor or to a boosted protease inhibitor 
versus staying on a Faberns. And they included people who stayed on a Faberns for at least 18 months. So basically people controlled on a Tripla who switched to either Integrase or who switched to a Boosted PI or who stayed on a Faberns and were just looking at basically changes in weight. And then they did a sub-analysis looking specifically at Dolutegravir with a Bacavir compared to other Integrase options. In this table, you'll see both baseline characteristics and then in green, the main outcome of the study. So here, in terms of the numbers, they had 136 individuals who switched to integrase. They had a very small number who switched to a PI, so I think that's a limitation for sure, compared to 325 who continued a Favarins or a Tripla, again, continued for at least 18 months. The median age was just under 40. Uh, they had lower numbers of female participants. Uh, you can see here the percentage that was non-white, the mean CD4 count was high, and the median weight at baseline you can see here. And then the punchline is that the mean weight change after 18 months in those who switched to an integrase inhibitor was higher than those who switched to boost to PI, though of course those uh, numbers are low, but more importantly, higher than those who stayed on a triplet. So some signal here, again, far from conclusive, but notably, those who switched to dolutegravir with a bacavir-lamividine gained the most weight, a mean of 5.3 kilos after 18 months, and that was statistically significant compared to those who stayed on a triplet. So is there something here? Certainly, there, it's, there's limitations to this data, but I think it means we have to at least ask the question. Finally, just at ID Week last month, there was a presentation that, again, was looking at individuals from a single center but again noted similar findings. So I just want to highlight this. So this was a retrospective analysis of non-obese patients starting ART over a kind of wide span of years at a single center in Rio. They included adults who are non-obese at baseline, so had BMI less than 30, who took ART for at least 90 days, and they simply reviewed for incident develop, development of, of obesity and they looked at time on various ART agents, a little bit about the baseline characteristics. So they had just over 1,500 individuals in this analysis. The median BMI uh, was 22.6. You can see here the median age, 61.3% male, uh, CD4 count, and viral load. And you can see here the baseline BMI, and their median follow-up time was 4.1 years. So overall, 76.5% in this retrospective analysis gained weight, 18.3% developed incident obesity based on BMI. The median BMI increased from 22.3 to 24.7. And I've highlighted in green here what happened with starting integrase inhibitors versus starting an NNRTI versus starting a PI. And so you can see here the obesity incidence rate, this is per 1,000 person years of follow-up, was very significantly elevated in those who started an integrase inhibitor compared to those who started agents from another class. The time to obesity diagnosis was shorter and the BMI gain per year was greater. And when they did multivariable analysis and looked at factors associated with incident obesity in this cohort, starting an integrase inhibitor was actually the most significant factor. And you can see here the adjusted hazard ratio. Other factors associated with incident obesity after starting ART were uh, younger age at initiation, female sex, higher baseline viral load or lower CD4, baseline hypertension or diabetes, or higher baseline BMI. But starting integrase inhibitor, interestingly, was the most highly associated factor. So I think what we have here is three single center studies, all with significant limitations but all finding some sort of suggestion that integrase inhibitors may be more associated with weight gain than other classes of ARVs, either at treatment initiation or with treatment switch. So what do we do with this? So I've been thinking about this and I am definitely not ready to abandon integrase inhibitors. They are still first line. I am still using them in the vast majority of individuals, but I do think this is worthy of more study. I do think we need more really solid data and data from uh, large cohorts and uh, data from other sources to either substantiate or refute this. I think we need studies to evaluate a potential mechanism. Are integrase inhibitors acting at adipocytes or other um, uh, mechanisms to actually cause weight gain? And I think the one thing I'm coming back to in my patients is, you know, now every time I start ART in somebody, I have actually worked into my counseling discussing the risk of 
weight gain. And I tell people, look, you're starting ART. Here are some side effects to watch out for. Here's other things to expect. And I tell people, look, for a lot of the time in the first year, year and a half, people do gain weight. And so I simply counsel that we need to watch the blood pressure. We need to watch the cholesterol, counsel about the importance of lifestyle measures. Should we be doing that even more with integrase inhibitors than with other classes? I'm not ready to say that, but I do think it should be part of our counseling anytime we start ART and potentially when we switch. But let me just ask you this question because I'm very curious to see the answers. Have you noticed this same association in your clinic, in your practice, in your patients or your clients? Have you noticed that patients taking integrase inhibitors seem to gain more weight than patients taking other classes of ARVs, either at initiation or when you switch? I'm really curious to see what everyone says. There is no right answer whatsoever. I'll ask you all, maybe I'll ask Sharisha. David, thank you for joining us as well. Maybe I'll ask you if you've seen this in your practice. Um, and I'm curious what you think of the data.